Hi, welcome back to my blog, it is English Literature, I am Ardhen Dude. I am just going to share you a few tips on how to say it if you see net English. In college lecturership or in entrance examination, net national eligibility test or the state eligibility test or in whichever uh, states we are sitting and the basic patterns are the same now depending on your way of practices you have to make a device plan how to sit on these exams uh, you have to make a proper planning or execution of that plan otherwise uh, it seems quite difficult a task to crack that kind of difficult exam i am stating it difficult because uh, two things are there First of all, the vastness of the syllabus and the second is the logical intricacy or rather the difficulty of those questions that you have to capture within that time frame. I am giving you three or four tips on how to read the text and how to make the syllabus comprehensive so that you can face the exam with bold assertion. First of all, history of English literature. Reading the history of English literature from the Old English till to the modern and encompassing all the literary text in world literature, you have to understand that inflow or the very chain of events that occurs in the history. You cannot take history as a historical reporting rather. You cannot get the meaning of historical incidents unless you understand the very happenings or the very inflow of the literature that states the very time of passing, that very time in which it was written. For example, if you are reading Buell, you most probably uh, making a sense clear that Bulb has been written in pagan tradition, later it has been corrupted or rather some Christian elements are infused in it and the then time Anglo-Saxon people, Jude Saxon and Anglo-Saxon people, dialect. So uh, when you are reading Bulb, don't read the story separately, rather read the life, read the traditions, read the inflow of the time of the then time otherwise uh, you will find it difficult to make the meaning of those questions which will encompass political as well as religious as well as other references related to build questions in romantic period if you take romantic period separately without understanding the french revolution the aftermath of the french revolution how it caused the english channel how it has been a cultural uh, return to nature, the elements of Rousseau. So these all elements or these all inflow of the literature, linguistically as well as its societal aspects and the literature as a theme. So you have to encompass all these three things together and then you can understand the history of literature in its full circle. Notably, when you are reading drama or the interpretation of drama, you cannot take the dramatic incidents or the incidents and the characters and the dramatic settings, all such uh, basic platforms of understanding a drama. You must have to understand the plot, you must understand the conflict inherent, but you must need a logical understanding of the story, why it happens. So put yourself different questions when you are reading. Uh, for, uh, for example, when uh, William Shakespeare's Macbeth, different questions in your mind, why it happens so? Why Macbeth is uh, taking such a revenge course? Uh, or uh, rather, why Macbeth is taking such a uh, brutal murdering or continued thereafter? Why Lady Macbeth becomes mad? Why there is uh, such a brutality of murder. Why Macbeth, even being general, believed those ghosts? Um, 
So these are the basic questions when you read about Hamlet, why Hamlet is delaying. Take the all uh, rhetorical uh, lines and its meaning but also take political view, take societal view as well as psychological view of the text and these characters. Try to understand uh, the basic inflow, why these characters is doing such and such things and what is the motive of the author why it is being written so so this kind of logical understanding and making making the notes of this individual text will make you uh, will make you rather confident in the examination hall in the segment of different logical understanding of sequences of events that occurs in novel particularly you must have to think twice before you make a meaningful rendering of a particular character of a particular incident why i am saying so because the interpretations of the drama as well as novel has been changed has been changed in several of the ways in several of the periods because the perspective of observing all those incidents all those happenings has been changed the author's motive has been another and the interpretation has been changed throughout the time because different public has seen story differently. So you have to understand why this kind of meaning or a text has not a static meaning. The text is dynamic. So you have to take the meaning forward as the stories or the criticism continues. So, understanding a particular story, understanding a particular novel, you must have to understand that the stories that you are reading or the stories that are inherent in the uh, storyline must have its different connotation, different perspective, different point of view. The most critical part or most difficult part that you will find is the criticism part or literary criticism. The literature and criticism go separately. Uh, it, it is uh, literature part is a kind of aesthetic things and criticism part is kind of a logical thing. And being a logical you have to be a syllogistic format, you must have to be a uh, divisive lawyer's perspective why this kind of author is saying so a particular period and a particular critical view a particular critical observations and there are different bisects of criticism different point of view and why they are viewing this thing differently this basic question you must have to ask yourself otherwise uh, you will find uh, the criticism part most boring uh, most pedantic. In understanding poetry, uh, basically uh, the poetry or uh, the different kind of poetry at different periods uh, make you quite confused in uh, many of the ways. First of all, you will find uh, the meanings of particular word referred to that particular period. Uh, if such word is written now, it might have meant otherwise. So technicality or technical part of a poetry is its rhythmic pattern, its inherent uh, rhyming pattern, uh, its word choices, imageries and all such things. And uh, the most interesting part in understanding a poetry is the poet himself. So when you pop up in any of the poem, uh, in your way, you must have to take your author as your friend. Understanding the author is very essential in understanding a particular piece of poetry. It might be true to other kind of literary outputs also, but poetry, uh, in that case of poetry, it is very essential. Because poetry is a kind of a subjective part where author looms large. So here you have to understand, you have to see the words through the eyes of the poet. So many of the times in these kind of exams, uh, logically you will find 
many of the questions out of the syllabus, out of that you have never touched. In the exam hall particularly, you have to focus few minute things that is uh, negation theory. Uh, you must have to negate some of the options that are not close to and then choice yours, the perfect one. So this kind of uh, different uh, technical issues or difficulties you must have to encompass while sitting on this kind of exams like UGC NET or a different state level lecturership entrance examinations. So best of luck and best wishes for you in the coming examinations. You can have many of the notes regarding UGC NET preparation in my website www.orthendudet.blogspot.com. You can also get those notes and get prepared for yourself and I think you will be a successful one in your endeavor. Bye-bye.